The Atheist Debates Patreon Project presents Flat Earthers and the Final Experiment. Hey everybody, as we end 2024, I thought I would do a video that was mostly a bit of fun because there's so much frustration. We've had to cover so many issues and the world seems like it's just a mess. But I want to talk about the Flat Earth Final Experiment. There's a website you can go to. Uh, if you search Flat Earth Final Experiment, you will find it. It's the-final-experiment.com. And what ended up happening was there are so many YouTube Flat Earth channels promoting various concepts of globe skepticism, globe denialism, and arguing for some version of a flat or quasi-flat model for the Earth. To many people, this is intuitive, intuitively ridiculous because we have all been taught and accepted the globe model. I will say, though, the majority of people probably couldn't give a good defense of the globe model or explain how or why uh, we know that it's the most accurate model. And... Once upon a time, I probably couldn't have either, and maybe I can't right now. It's not an area of expertise of mine. It's not one I address on the programs. It's not one I spend a great deal of time studying. But the Flat Earthers have tried a number of different models, and the general image that is presented by most of them, not everybody has the same model, is a disk Earth with the Arctic in the center, all of the continents kind of spreading out from them, and then a ice ring around the outside. And that ice ring that encompasses the entirety of the Earth is Antarctica. Now, on a flat Earth model, the sun orbits around, it's much closer to Earth. Evidently, there's something to block the light, whatever. I don't know why you can't see it from any, everywhere. For some reason, gravity and everything else works different, uh, and all the other planets are somehow lies or deceptions. I don't know. Their model doesn't make sense. But at a minimum, both sides got together and said, the globe model suggests that if you're in Antarctica in December, which is the Southern Hemisphere's summer, the peak of it, the sun never sets. Earth, the globe Earth is actually tilted and orbiting the sun while the Earth revolves on its axis. So as the Earth revolves on its axis, the sun is still at the same angle, roughly. And so what you should see in Antarctica in December is the sun never setting, just basically rotating around. I mean, it dips a little because you know we're on an angle. Um, but the sun won't set. And on a flat earth model, that is not possible. To have this ice ring around the entirety of the earth, to have a sun that never sets, there's, there's no version of that model that allows for an observation of a sun going around overhead and not setting. And so they got together and they said, you know what? We can do the final experiment. Both sides talked about Antarctica holding the key to the true shape of the earth. Both sides agreed that whether or not there's a 24-hour sun in Antarctica would confirm if we live on the flat plane model or a globe model. This is at least partially technically incorrect. There could be some other model. But with these two models competing, if we saw a 24-hour sun in Antarctica, that's not possible with the flat plane model. And it is exactly what is predicted by the current globe model. If that's the case and you go to Antarctica and you see a sun for 24 hours and it doesn't set, congratulations, your flat Earth model has been falsified. The globe Earth model may or may not be confirmed merely by that single observation, but if you combine this with a lot of the other observations, essentially the globe model is the one that is consistent with the facts, consistent with all of the facts, and contradicted by none of the facts. So we'll just spend tens of thousands of dollars. We'll fly some flat earthers down to Antarctica. We'll fly some globe earthers down to Antarctica. We will film, uh, we will observe, and we will report back. 
and we'll call it the final experiment. Boy, this was fun. Um, turns out the observations down there exactly match the globe model. Uh, I'm not remotely surprised, but they do. And there's a time-lapse video of 24-hour observation. The camera moves and follows the sun around. You can see it as it dips. It's, it's perfect. And it's clear. But, you know, I saw, I saw Thor wielding a hammer taking out Thanos. So you can fake anything with CGI. And that's why we didn't just stick a camera down there, but we actually flew people down there. Now, there are specific logistics about these flights. And that is that you flew to, I believe it was Chile. And from there, you go out to Antarctica. It's pretty easy, although I don't know if anybody specifically did it, to monitor from the moment you leave Antarctica until you reach, or from the moment you leave Chile until you reach Antarctica, how much time at what speed the plane is going tells you the distance. And if you wanted to suggest that instead they had flown them from Chile all the way up to Antarctica, that would be a different amount of time. Just like the other reasons a flat earth model doesn't work because flying from, you know, the, uh, the tip of South America to Australia um, should take, you know, it should be faster going across uh, the, the North Pole, but it's not. It's low, or even if it is, it doesn't map up with, with the time. So there's loads of different ways to, to address this, not the least of which is while you're in the plane, you could fly a lap around Antarctica and observe that it is not a wall circling the entirety of the Earth. You can fly all the way around it to make that observation. I don't know if that happened in this one or not. But the observations are fully consistent with the globe model, and one of the flat earthers, Jaron, acknowledged this, said, sometimes you're wrong, and I was wrong about the 24-hour sun. But he didn't say he was wrong about the flat earth model or that the, or that the earth was flat. Clearly, their model has been falsified by this for the people who were there. But what he did say was, what does it mean? Well, you're going to have to go figure it out yourself. And essentially, they were talking about going back to the drawing board. You know, hey, we've, we've observed this 24-hour sun. This falsifies our current model, but let's go see if we can make another model. This is an example of not following the evidence to its conclusion, but instead trying to lead the evidence towards the conclusion you desire. We know that this sort of denial is what happens when you're faced with, when, you, when you've made a public profession of your beliefs and you're faced with evidence to the contrary. Now, the folks who weren't there still don't have a direct observation or anything more than the word of these people who were there and the video footage of what was there. Um, and they may refer to them as shills. There were, I think, three flat earthers who were there. One of them, whose YouTube channel is Wits It Gets It, um, said, I think people need to be honest and humble. And we were wrong about the 24-hour sun. How does it work? Well, I've seen a physical demonstration that could show how this works. Interesting. So when, when, we're, when, we, when you're finally there and you observe for yourself that the sun does exactly what these people advocating for the globe model said it does, and something that you yourself believe is impossible under your model, all of a sudden you've seen a new model that could explain this. Why didn't we address that before we got to the final experiment? So now it's time for them to go back to the drawing board. So I guess the final experiment wasn't really final. The final, final frontier is space. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of flat earthers in denial. And so you're going to have to take those people who weren't there because at least one of the people who wasn't there suggested that they had been duped and were not actually in Antarctica, that they'd been taken somewhere else. And now he's got to explain how there's some other location in December where the sun never sets. I don't know how you do that, but good luck to you. Um, we have failed 
to teach skepticism, to teach critical thinking, and to teach good standards of evidence. The very humility that Witsit gets it was paying lip service to. We need people to recognize science doesn't proclaim truth. Science tests and demonstrates the best models that it most accurately describe reality. And those modules are those those models are tentative and subject to revision. We failed to teach that while there are lies and corruption everywhere in the world, but that doesn't mean there's lies and corruption everywhere in the world. When you, when you say that there's lies and corruption in the government, that doesn't mean every aspect of the government is lies and corruption. And there are mistakes made in science. That doesn't mean everything in science is a mistake. And this notion that, well, if I don't, haven't seen it myself, it's just not true, is a lie. All of us accept countless things that we haven't seen ourselves. It's not until we have some ideological view that blocks something that we even make an attempt to say, well, you haven't seen it for yourself. This is creationist logic from the get-go. Sending their kids to school so that when they're learning the facts of evolutionary biology, they say, well, were you there? Okay. Um, Jesus died for our sins. Well, were you there? See, we can do that for anything. I wasn't there, but somebody else was. Yes, but you don't know that. You've just got stories and reports. We have given people the impression that the only reliable path is to observe something directly. And that's not even a reliable path. You can be deceived. Your senses can be deceived. You can reach the wrong conclusions from what you've directly observed, which is why science isn't just, look, there's the answer. It is a rigorous process of making hypotheses, making sure that they are testable, including falsifiable, doing experiments, having those experiments and results challenged, tested, and attempted to be replicated, and then constructing a model that best describes all of the available information. So when we have the new, new final experiment and we're sending them to space, how are we going to do that? Are they going to film it and stream the entire trip live? That also won't change people's minds because we have technology that can emulate that and fake it. I mean, I can't do it myself, but I know that I have the tools right here on this computer to create a video that appears to be a Earth to the moon and back trip. I just don't have the skills to do it, but somebody does. And as long as that exists, it gives them something plausible to point to, even though it's not actually plausible. They're confusing possible with plausible. But it gives them something that feels plausible to point to, to deny the reality. Even if you were to put them on the rocket themselves, even if, you know, SpaceX were to take them up, even the... Even, you know, they, they can interact with people who've been to space. They can see the pictures from space. They can look at other objects in space and yet do not seem to be concerned that their model for the Earth is the most bizarre, anti-science, unsupported um, assertion about reality that I think I've ever seen. So this is why some ideas are no longer deserving of our attention. People are like, when did, you, when did you stop, um, you know, investigating? Well, you should stop investigating when there's nothing new to test. We don't need to test the flat earth model again. We've just falsified the model that they had. If they come up with a new model that explains the observations and is consistent with the observations, that will deserve to be addressed. <clears throat> And that's the very next time that we should waste any time on flat earthers. We don't want to waste time with people who will say, oh, well, it was faked. It was CGI. It was, you know, they're going to come up with excuse after excuse, none of which they can demonstrate. None of which are testable or falsifiable. How do you prove that nothing nefarious happened? If we can fake a, a live stream anywhere, and we can, 
that will always be the excuse. But until they come up with a new model that explains the observations, they are only denying the observations. And that is in direct opposition to what <clears throat> most of them suggested they were willing to accept. Present me this evidence and I will, you know, denounce my model. Except that's not what happens. Some of them drop that model and search for a different one. Doesn't matter how many things we show are absolutely consistent with the reliable science of the globe model. Until they come up with a better model, they should get less attention than the guy standing on the street corner with a sandwich board saying the end is nigh because they don't have anything more to test. And until they do, we got bigger issues. So in some respects, at least until there's a way to get them to acknowledge and go to space or if they come up with a new model, this is definitely the end of flat earth testing Everything else is just flat earth talking. See you next time. Bye-bye.